Right? Uh, we, uh, we have gone over, overboard on time, but um, <coughs> before you know I start my presentation, I want to preempt that the next set session is going to be even more interesting okay, and you need to be here. Uh, the other thing is throughout this conference you would have seen you know things um, said about data, things um, you know solutions and tools given to you to protect data, move data, play around with it right. Um, I am going to take a different angle on it, a different hit on it and I think the by far is the most important and the most critical presentation um, you know in, in this whole conference because according to me compliance and uh, you know risk mitigation is priceless you, you know you, you, you can't set a value to it you can't do an ROI to it. So my presentation right I am going to uh, quickly do try and do it in 20 minutes um, you know going to see how we can improve efficiency and you know reduce risk with EMC archival solutions okay. Um, so first I would like to on this slide right um, all of you all have heard this term data deluge what does that mean right simply put it is the amount of data that gets thrown at us which is really difficult to manage right um, we you know we see a lot of studies on this digital universe uh, you know some are interesting things which um, you know I read and I have actually made a quick note of it it says that the digital universe will be around 35 zettabytes okay by 2020 and I think that is still you know an old number. So whatever that means how many of us zeros that are the byte means that means data is growing right. Uh, but what is interesting is that 80 percent of that data will be will, will come to people like you and me to manage in our enterprises okay the digital universe is all the data man has ever created from the time electronic data came right. So I am saying 80 percent of that is going to come to people like you and me so the stress is going to be on you as, as, as people who are going to handle it and on infrastructure like people who are giving you information infrastructure like EMC to handle that and manage that and make sense out of it right. The other thing is you know interesting thing is um, there is a huge change it says 60 per 7 percent change on the digital formats right when we say formats I am talking about you know JPEG, uh, MPEG or you know docs and you know even we all know how many times word has changed right from DOC to DOCX and whatever right. So formats are changing when formats change that means the way we handle these data also is going to change right to make sense out of these uh, data. The next thing it says that you know one third of this data or one third of the data you have in your organization which is you know 80 percent which you are going to be handling which is part of the digital universe will be part of the cloud. So if not today tomorrow you will host your data in the cloud. So you know you will do IT as a service and one third of that data will reside in the cloud and if it does not at some point in time the data which you have in your organization would have passed through the cloud again interesting that means data will leave your organization you know tenant somewhere and then come back to you or maybe you know it would, might, might go uh, up and down right and the last and the most interesting point right data and you know the compliance you know the whole compliance um, related you know issues is already crossed something like a 64 billion dollar market. Now people who are selling into the into, to, into a compliance play would see profit of 46 uh, you know billion but how I see it is you are at stake that you know you can be hit at something like 46 billion dollars if you do not even take the dollars and you just take an Indian value to it right you can be fined so much you know because of compliance. So then what do we do okay. So I am going to uh, first uh, see three business realities what we see in our organization okay and then we will see how we can how EMC can help you to uh, manage this and you know to mitigate risk. The first business reality email, email is ever growing in our organizations right. So studies say that 
54 percent of people think they are pack rats. We will come to know, when we come to what is pack rats, right? 54 percent of people think they are pack rats who use email for less than 120 minutes in a day. So, people who use email for 20 minutes, I mean uh, less than 2 hours in a day, you know, they feel they are pack rats. What are pack rats? You know, pack rats, you know, they are, they are just the rodents actually who go, go about wildly picking up garbage, picking up a lot of food, even what they do not need, right? Do you feel that? I feel that every day when I go and I open in the morning, right? And uh, morning starts for me at 1 in the 1, one right? Um, I see I'm, I know my already my inbox is filled with something like, you know, 250 emails because you are on CC, you are on CC, you are on BCC on every email, right? So, what is the ripple effect of that? One email with one MB attachment sent to 200 people suddenly becomes 200 MB of content sitting on your message, on your information uh, store, on your messaging environment. So, people are just collecting emails, right? And this percentage even more increases as you know the number of hours you use email per day. So, someone who uses more than 120 minutes in a day, right, 72 percent of that category also think they are pack rats. And to top it all, people use their messaging environments as filing cabinets, right? How many of us, you know, if it's if, if it's a some important document, you send it to yourself, right? You send it to yourself and keep it over there. Who's paying for this? It's you know, it's your company, your IT, your bought state of the art, you know, VNX storage. You put you know, Vplex. You put all the you know complicated technology, and you are protecting your exchange. But people are using it as filing cabinets. Right? So, this is a reality with emails, it is growing right? um, and it is also getting tough for us to manage email and the most important thing is there is also uh, another new twist to emails that people require to keep emails for you know for, uh, for record retention. Right? Today and this is a good thing you guys can go and sue your friends or your you know someone you do not like with an email from hotmail. Okay, or from Gmail. So, today email can be used in the court of law as proof that he threatened to kill me for example. Right? So, in an organization and most of our Indian organization where we are doing you know transacting with uh, uh, you know multinationals or we are having client side conversations, we are asked to keep our customer conversations for 7 years. Why? If there is a litigation, if there is some you know legal issue, we can go search these emails and prove ourselves not guilty or get caught and say yes I said this, right. So, again there is another twist to the whole thing, yes capacity in messaging infrastructure is growing, the next thing is you know uh, the twist of compliance, right. So, managing email is getting tougher. Next thing is you know unstructured data which I am you know file office automation data. I think the one thing which grows like rabbits in our organization is file servers or the content on file servers, right? Database can be always pruned, it is complex, but you know you can do something on it, right? Purged and yeah, you, you, can, you can move things around. Unstructured data, if you go and do a study on your uh, file servers and your departmental file servers, right? Uh, EMC has simple files, you know, file server assessment tools, if you go run it. Always I have seen that you know 40 percent of the files have never been touched for a long long time ago. I have even seen you know um, uh, really historic formats of files, but all still sitting there on file servers and occupying precious tier 1 storage. So, they are growing. So, what people do is they invest in things like SharePoint, popular tools, document management systems, right. So, when, when you invest in something like that, right, uh, those systems also start growing. So, your SharePoint environment, SharePoint is quite popular, starts growing, right. So, let us talk only on SharePoint, there are many document management systems, you talk on this because this is you know uh, a hit product, right, the most commonly used. So, 71 percent of organizations like you and me are going to invest in something like SharePoint to manage this unstructured growth, you know, uh, growth of unstructured data. 67 percent of them also believe that if you just buy classic SharePoint off the shelf, it is not going to help you. You need to do some amount of customization. You need a documentum, you need some you know a, another third party tool 
to come and help you to 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 drive actually what your business needs right so that's 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 a reality so you know tools like sharepoint is a reality and is going to you know grow so that's the second business reality and the third one as a most important thing these numbers will not make sense to you in the indian market and i don't want to make sense to you it to make sense to you with the dollar dollar conversion we have today right we all fall off our chairs but anyway take all of this with a pinch of salt and then you multiply it by our existing dollar conver conversion it's still very very heavy right if you don't manage your data you are susceptible to risk right 89% of our companies and this is you know 89 today you know in in, in indian uh, context i can say it's even more you know face litigation in 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 our, in our company you know it might be just very petty litigation right this fellow did this or you know he made this manufacture this soap with the same fragrance i actually saw this right with the same fragrance which i did so it's it's litigation right one company suing another so there are a lot of litigations so there is litigation right 89 percent lit this costs you something like this 1.5 million average cost per incident per lawsuit right you can even take it at, at even 1.5 lakhs right this 1.5 lakhs is what we can put on our books but the amount of bribes we you know we pay in our country in the court of law that can go that is all uncounted for right but yes this is also there and then you know you will be spending money to actually create you know uh, tools which will help you in compliance right for record retention for e discovery and yes this is a us number but you know they see something like you know you have to spend 24 million to to discover or you know to do review on 1 terabyte of information now this information can be email can be data sitting in sharepoint or can be just data sitting outside right and the formula is this reduce the volume of documents produced you can reduce your overall risk okay so what does emc have now this is also another study um, you know if you don't uh, manage all this data properly right and the way we said and i'm i know i'm i'm keeping on frightening you guys but this is the reality just look at these three points right if you don't do it um, you know properly you will fail internal and external audits your cost of your information infrastructure or you know your storage costs will keep rising if you don't manage this growth of this unstructured data if if you don't stop your users using your email systems as filing cabinets you are going to have issues and then the third point is what i like right if you don't manage the data it's also going to cause loss of employee productivity just keep these three points and we'll go through what emc has and how emc can help you right manage all these three uh, business risks so what people do is you know um treat backup as archive right this is a this is a common mistake what we do in 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 uh, in within our enterprises right within our data center so i just want to define what is archive and this is a sneha interpretation right and what i've highlighted is is the terms which are strong terms which i like right it's a specialized repository so when i say specialized repository that means it is time tested it's made for back for archive right so you can't say that you will take backup of your data on tape you will make another copy of it keep it on the shelf and call it archive it is not okay next thing you preserve it i mean it's, it all it not be kept for long term long term it maintains authenticity that means it is most of the time archive eligible data is kept on devices which are worm that means you know write once read many you cannot you know go and tamper the data right guaranteed access when you say guaranteed access what we mean is that you know even after 10 years 20 years 100 years clinical you know um, data trial data pharma companies keep their data for 100 day 100 years and they keep it for some of them keep it forever right so guaranteed access even after so many years when you go and you try to restore data it will come back can today anyone restore data from lto one tapes that 
DLT, SDLT, right? Some people may, right? But then all these things can be are now today found in museums, not in data centers, right? So when you're doing archive, it's a special uh, process, and you know you need to use special tools. The next thing is quickly the difference between backup and archive. I just want to touch upon this one important, uh, you know, point where backup is a copy. That means the data is still there in production. You make a copy for operational restore. So exchange server crashes, you have a copy, you want to restore it. But archive is for retrieve. Archive is a move. It is no more there in production. It is moved to this archive repository, right? And it, when it is moved, it frees up space in your production for new data to come in, right? But this archive data is important, compliance, right? And so it's going to be kept for. So if you see from a retention retention perspective, typically backup is short term. You do one full, you do incrementals. The next when the next full comes, it overrides your last full. But your archive is always long term. It's all in decades and years, right? So don't think backup is archive. Also, if auditors walk into your organization and if you show backup tapes saying that this is here, here goes my archive, you're going to fail. Okay, so, so what do we have in EMC? Uh, we have just one tool, right, to help you with uh, email, file, and um, SharePoint data. Right, it's called EMC Source One, right, Integrated Content Archiving Platform. Um, whatever it may be, right, you have Exchange as your messaging system, you have Lotus Notes as your messaging system. You can also have your um, emails hosted in Office 365. You can have SharePoint and you can have files on departmental Windows file servers or on uh, NAS appliances, right? What we will do is we will collect it, we will organize it, you know, classify it the way you want us to and then we will full text index it, right? We are going to index it so that you can search it. All of you all know you use Google, de Google desktop, right? Or your Windows search. We do full text index so we can search it. Then we archive it. Now you can say that all legal data should be kept for 10 years. All finance data should be kept for 20 years. So all that can be done and it is stored. When you say it's stored in containers, it is stored in devices which are our appliances which are purpose built for archive. EMC Centera, EMC data domain with worm, Atmos, right? I, I don't know if you uh, have sat through these presentations, but these are all, um, you know, purpose-built appliances for archive. So quickly we will see, first source one for mail, okay, um, two things in the, in the email environment. We want to first reduce our uh, primary storage, right? So source one can do this, it can go, you can go and set a policy saying that all emails older than 120 days move away from your primary mail server and keep it in the source one server. When it moves it, it keeps shortcuts, okay? So what happens is when the policy runs, it goes and moves the data from the primary messaging system to source one and when it's moving it, it also indexes it. By virtue of moving it, you have freed up space in your primary mail server, right? By, by virtue of full text indexing it, you have made your emails more discoverable, right? So you can do e-discovery of your email, right? Next thing is, uh, it can help you in all the other features, right, uh, functions. But, you know, let me tell you one uh, simple use case and, and I have some graphics for it. If you see in this example, before shortcut, the email is around 720 KB, you know, once you do a shortcut, it becomes all single digit KB, you know, 7 KB, 7 KB, 8 KB, you know, the graphic is bad. But by the virtue of reducing it from 720 KB to 7 KB, so much of space you have, have saved on your exchange server or your Lotus Note server. So when you go and you again run defrag on your information store, it's going to reclaim that white space and you're going to have that space for new emails to come in. So unnecessarily, instead of you all buying, every time buying new disks, you know, costly tier one storage and putting it in your exchange environment, you can use this tool and, and you know, stagger your exchange server upgradation, hardware upgradation, right? And then just that we have also done full text index, you can use 
the you know you can do search all your millions of emails for data right for example if you search the word kill it's going to search all the millions of emails and all the thousands of users all the in, you know data and going to show all the emails which had this letter kill word kill if this word was within an attachment right which is that means there was a email with a powerpoint attachment and in there somewhere this was mentioned it will catch it and it will show it to you right so it will help you in e discovery next thing is so so you know that's for that's that's what we can do for email next uh, module is sharepoint uh, source one for sharepoint we quickly go to the graphics two things i can do i can externalize your sharepoint content i can get into your um, uh, sql database remove the blobs older blobs from your sharepoint and keep it into primary storage or you know near line storage even though i have moved it or externalized your content for the user there is no difference when he goes inside his sharepoint uh, you know farm and he goes and he you know goes clicks on the url all his data is still there by this what we have done we have freed up space in your primary uh, sharepoint instance okay now the lighter the instance is going to be faster you can back it up faster you can manage it faster but for the user the data is still you know connected now when we are doing all this when you are externalizing the content we still go and do organize classify full text index right so now the, again because we have full text indexed it we have organized it we can do discovery on this sharepoint content also whatever you have within a sharepoint environment we can do this we can go and archive it okay the next thing is for file now file you know it is look simple but it also complex and it also you know uh, gives you real roi like i said if you go look at your file servers 40% of the data is always not used it's old data but you might require it for for certain reasons right so if you go and you run this tool it's going to discover those old files moved from your production uh, file server to probably you know another file server with uh, sata disks on it or another tier of storage within your nas right and you're going to free up space so look at it like a tank of water we removed the old water and we have made space for fresh water to come in but it is still collected right and when we do this collection we again do full text indexing right we do your classification so that you can do discovery on it next right so we have we have captured classified and done you know um, uh, we have stored all of this on top of this we have the source one discovery manager tool right so with source one discovery manager you can sit and you can you know do e discovery across all this content email file and sharepoint okay quickly if you go if you have a legal notice right you have a case someone has filed a case against you now what you will be doing is you'll be having someone called you know the person who owns this uh, entire litigation right Uh, within your so basically be your legal people he will assign what is called a matter manager and the typical workflow and the matter manager can go and he can delegate uh, you know these roles of someone who will inspect the data someone will tag it and give it someone who will read through whatever we have discovered right someone has uh, has put a financial case so you're going to search all the content and this content can be in your emails the contents can be in your file servers it can be in your sharepoint and then once it is all found and discovered and made sense of you know we can export it we can export it because now you have to export that data take printouts maybe or take it in psd format to the court right and people you know i know people who sitting here understand what i'm saying because this happens so you have this simple gui where you go create these search patterns create these templates okay and these are also templates they are here so the next time again you don't need to go reinvent the e wheel you know you open the template and do those small changes and you can again run the e discovery so a simple tool for e discovery and once you have done that you go and you export it into these various formats what is ex what is actually very interesting is the erdm you know e discovery um, format so this is in the us court of law and the uk court of law they actually ask for you you know in this format right it's an open format so you can export it and then take it and go so 
this is the end of the presentation. So, what we are saying is with the EMC source one platform we help you cut costs, how am I helping you to cut costs? I am delaying your exchange server um, you know migration by um, by removing all the old emails right and making ways uh, for, 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 for the uh, new for new emails right. We are managing risk. So, I am going to help you with tools which is going to index your emails, index your files and you know help you in e discovery. I am going to simplify e discovery with the e discovery tool where I am going to you know help you to discover your data across you know uh, platforms, we are messaging unstructured and structured right. So, thanks I would now like to invite Vinod um, as I said the last but the most exciting presentation. <laughs>